so far we have uh, uh, recorded code and uh, uh, created repository and uh, created the test flow added synchronization point added checkpoints and did data driven and everything fine and we can go ahead and execute it now what if you get an error how are we going to handle this when you go to languages uh, like java or c sharp or python or javascript anywhere uh, when you get an error you will have something called try catch block you will try some code and uh, in catch block you will handle that but whereas in uft or in vb scripting you don't have something like that so you have only one thing that is on error resume next so when you get an error you can forward and you can verify whether you got an error or not if you get an error then you can perform some actions over there that's it that means it's not like jumping from try to try to catch block we don't have that so that's the issue so now how are we going to handle that in uft so to handle that we have recovery scenarios concept when it comes to on error resume next on error resume next it is a blind execution till end even if you get an error execute till end something like that but when it comes to recovery scenarios we can specify what should happen on an error so you have to give us some four situations you may get a pop up which blocks an error so unexpected pop up we don't know whether we got that or not while we are creating the test we did not get it and while we are executing that we got that so it can be anything unexpected pop ups a security alerts in browser or uh, in in when desktop applications you may get an alert something like you know something is saved and so everything collapsed from then right so you may get any kind of situations so what you wanted to do when you get a pop up or an object is disabled it, it in an unexpected object state it is disabled it is enabled and what you wanted to do in that case let's say you did some mistake with respect to test data so what you wanted to do in that case or suddenly application is get crashed and what you wanted to do so like that there are some unexpected uh, errors what uft is providing so when you get into that situation what you wanted to do so this is not like a, a code uh, handling kind of thing and it is like object handling kind of thing that means uh, in other languages you have try catch blocks where you try some code and you get an error then you will come to catch block and do that but when it comes to uft it is not the code which is going to do it is the uft ide itself is going to get it so when some step is failed which is not related to vb scripting so it's not related to vb scripting when some object related step is failed object related step means so you try to click on a button you try to enter some text so that action is getting failed so when some action is failed then you have to check for okay something happened okay, is there any recovery scenario created if the recovery scenario is created and based on the error what you have got now it is going to compare with the defined recovery scenarios if pop up is available then it checks for a pop up in application if object state is available it checks for object specific object state in application if there is a test run error is available in recovery scenarios then it checks for that that means if we have defined it then only it checks for that in the application so now what you can do there you can specify what causes the error and second one you can specify what you wanted to do on that error you wanted to uh, click on the default button or you wanted to call a function or you wanted to close app or you wanted to you know uh, do something else okay what you wanted to do on that particular error so you can specify that right so now in our example i am intentionally going to create an error going to create an error that is an expected one if we have any expected errors i can use if condition if that error exists and then do something but recovery scenarios are purely for unexpected behavior of the application 
So this is a unique feature which is there in UFT when compared with other automation tools. Now, let's see that. How are we going to do that? So I'm going to disable, uh, uh, I'm going to comment this password enter step so that what will happen? It is not going to enter password and OK button is disabled. OK button is disabled. So when OK button is disabled, so I wanted to do something. So I know that, you know, this is not the exact uh, uh, situation that I'm uh, uh, explaining, but I'm saying that, you know, what should happen. So in that case, OK button gets disabled. If OK button gets disabled, so I will say that, you know, enter, okay, verify uh, username is enter, entered and verify your uh, password is entered, something like that. Okay, if those two are there, then only OK button gets enabled, isn't it? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a recovery scenario for it. So let me do that now. First, let me execute and it will fail. And of course it should. Username is entered, password is not entered and immediately it got failed saying that object is disabled. Now this is the situation to create recovery scenario. So now, is it possible to create recovery scenario? Now, okay, let's see. Where is that? It is under Tools, uh, Resources, Recovery Scenario Manager. And clicking on New, this is New button here. This is New. Next, and then what you got? So did you get a pop-up window? No, it's an object state. The state of the object is disabled. So what you wanted to do, okay, you need to specify the object first. So what you wanted to do when it is disabled? When you get the situation, when you got an error and the situation is OK button is disabled. OK button is disabled. Now it is asking which properties you wanted to specify. I wanted to specify disabled property. I wanted to specify disabled property, enabled false. So you have to add this attribute. So you have to get an error and the object state is disabled. Then what you wanted to do? So you must define some operation and I wanted to uh, 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 use, I wanted to do keyboard or mouse action. Keyboard or mouse action means it will ask you to click on something. So this is suitable for any pop-up event, any, any, any pop-up event. And I wanted to close application process. This is suitable if I, I can't go ahead with the execution. And function call. So when you wanted to enter some data, then only you have to go for function call. So function call means you can specify any function by creating a uh, text file or VBS file any place. So what I'm going to do is I will be creating a text file or VBS file because that's where we store the functions. So I'm creating UFT training and here I will specify the lib files. I will share this this test and all I, uh, after creating a folder. So within lib folder, I will specify everything so that you can use them. So right click on it and then creating it. You can you can create anything. You can create recovery .txt. You can create recovery file, txt file, or you can create VBS file. Anything is fine. No need to worry about it. So what is the path of this? You can take the path of it and then specify path here as well. Specify path here as well. And in this part, okay, you need to specify the library. Oh, I need to use that path here and recovery.txt and shift right click and copy as path. So shift right click will give you copy as path. I can specify the path directly here like this, right? Let's see whether this codes work or not. Yes, yes, that's working. So it is creating a recovery function. It's creating a recovery function, what you want it to do when you get this. So clicking on next, I don't want to add another recovery function. And what you want it to do after that? So I will be specifying some alternate action over there. So that means when this OK button is disabled, I will enter username and password again. That means I have to repeat clicking on OK button again, then only it works. So repeat current step and continue. So it depends on the action what you are doing. You need to specify the scenario name. 
scenario name is okay disabled something like that you can specify any name here and add scenario to current test so then it gets added to your test and then you need to save it so this is also is required i'm creating another folder something like that recovery and i will be creating that i will be creating so this is a scenario right i'll specify this is a flight scenario perfect now what i have to do so you can stop it so you don't need to be in recording state to create it but a uh, running state to create it you can stop it and then you can create that now what i wanted to do is i have to specify entering password entering username and password where where do i need to specify that under lib so you can, if you observe that it is automatically creating a function and when i got an error i need to make sure that it should execute entering username and entering password entering username and entering password it should execute that clear i will go for word wrap okay this should execute that let's see now it's over let us check whether it got associated or not you can see that it got associated into recovery scenarios okay button disabled the triggered event is if you get this object and you have to get an error and if you get this object then it is going to execute a recovery function and after executing recovery function it is going to repeat step and continue that means clicking on okay button will be repeated again let me close this and then rerun this should open the application should get failed while clicking on okay button when it is failed it will enter username and password again and clicks on okay button it failed of course it entered it works so this is how uft executes some recovery on error and then continues to next step so this is unique feature in uft ide why i'm saying that because when it comes to languages like java c sharp what will happen it jumps from try to catch block it jumps from try to catch block so if you wanted to execute next step after handling that issue no you don't again you need to implement catch blocks for every statement that becomes again difficult try catch blocks for every statement is not possible so that's why i'll say that this is a unique feature in uft and because it is just a two hours course in udemy because udemy free courses are restricted for only two hours uh, i could not explain everything in detail and also uh, every uh, uh, recovery scenario like pop up test run error application crash or in even in data driving uh, different different parameterization techniques i could not explain in detail but i am making sure that you know one a uh, 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 type is covered from each and every topic so one type from synchronization one type from checkpoints one one type from uh, uh, data driving and one type from uh, recovery scenario so hope this helps you uh, to uh, uh, make your career and uh, in uft and also in automation and and please concentrate on learning automation not on learning a tool remember that so nowadays multiple tool knowledge is required not just only uft you have to learn multiple tools so uft is not just enough or selenium is not just enough you have to learn multiple tools and multiple uh, technologies as well like you know if you are in testing make sure that you learn uh, uh, test automation and also uh, uh, of course functional automation api automation api uh, gui automation api automation right uh, performance automation so whatever the automation types you have in testing and learn everything that becomes end to end please do that okay thanks for 
uh, learning course.